Man, now streaming on Netflix, is the newest film from director Richard Linklater, known for School of Rock, Days and Confused, Waking Life, The Before Trilogy, Boyhood, the list goes on. He also wrote it along with star Glenn Powell, loosely based around the career of real-life police informant Gary Johnson. Yes, loosely based because the plot of this movie revolves around him doing things that he'd probably go to jail for if they were to get out, and in the end, the filmmakers admitted that they made them up. So yes, he's a police informant. He's an initially mild-mannered college professor who has a side gig of working for the police as a fake hitman. So when somebody tries to hire him to kill somebody, he'll just come in wearing a wire, and as soon as the client hires him, that's when the cops come in. However, and this is probably when the fictional stuff comes in, he later comes across a client who he actually feels sympathy for and even ends up falling in love with her, and that leads both of these people down a twisty path of crimes and cover-ups. The main character's job requires him to go undercover using many different types of personalities, meaning this is the kind of role that shows just how much range an actor has. And it turns out Glenn Powell has a lot of range, he's great in this role, portraying the hitman and all of his alter egos. But that wouldn't mean shit if the rest of the movie isn't interesting. And this movie is very interesting. It's a fun crime story that's full of unexpected turns. This isn't one of those dark and gritty gangster movies. No, it fills its runtime with a light sense of fun. And an interesting romance between the main couple. Richard Linklater has made a fun crime caper, and Glenn Powell has given a performance that elevates it. It plays loose with facts and doesn't try to hide that because it knows how to make an interesting story. Yet another movie that's too good for Netflix. But that's still a win for people who manage to hold on to that service. Please don't spoil the movie by adding your own soundtrack. Quiet Place Day One is from director Michael Sarnowski, director of Pig. He also wrote it based on a story he made with John Krasinski. And this time we're going back to the beginning. Day One. Although most of it pretty much takes place in the days right after Day One, but whatever. And this one has Academy Award winner turned scream queen Lupita Nyong'o as a cancer patient who travels to New York City just in time to witness the beginning of the invasion. It's like the feature length version of that opening flashback from part two. And of course, that length means it's more fleshed out. But it's not all just the initial chaos and destruction. The people catch on to the fact that they need to stay quiet pretty quickly. And from that early point on, it goes on to the feel of the original. It has just as little dialogue and just as much tension. And it sticks a lot closer to that vibe than part two did. But the apocalyptic city gives it a personality of its own that makes it stand out from any of its predecessors. However, it's also just a little deeper than that. Once again, this is the director of the indie hit Pig, which was a pretty emotional movie, and he lends some of that emotional heft to this one as well, to a lesser extent. Nyong'o's part is a real character who has a good personal journey. Moving on to a bigger project has not dulled the director's sense of humanity towards the characters. I'd probably rank this one as better than part 2, but probably not as good as the original. It's a very tense look at the beginning of it all, made even more tense by the sympathetic characters. (laughs) 